Today we celebrate the memorial of St. John Paul II, and I want to reflect a little bit upon his life this afternoon. Um, St. John Paul II was born in 1920 um, in Poland, and he lived until 2005. And you know, his early life in Poland um, was very challenging. Um, when he was eight years old, his, his mother died. Um, after that, one of his brothers died. Um, by the time he was 23, his father died, and he was an orphan, and he no longer had any brothers and sisters living. So he went through a lot, you know, in his early life. Um, he ended up entering the seminary in his early 20s, and at this time, the seminary was underground. So um, he had to go to seminary in secret, in hiding, and he knew that he, if he would have been captured, um, it would be at the risk of his life. Um, the Nazis at this time were, were you know, occupying Poland, and um, the communists would come in soon after that, and it was a, a challenging time. Um, John, his original name was Karl Wojtyla. Um, he became um, archbishop and cardinal in, in Krakow, and in 1978, he became Pope. Um, it's interesting, you know, again, looking back at his early life, um, he was a very talented person, um, very talented man. He was a soccer player. Um, he loved to go hiking. Um, he was an actor. He was a poet. And he had this gift for languages. Um, he knew, you know, around 25 different languages. And all of these characteristics about him being an actor, being, knowing languages, being an athlete, um, served him very well as Pope. Um, he served as Pope for 27 years, from 1978 until 2005. And he was known as a great teacher. Um, he taught on everything imaginable. He wrote many, many encyclicals. Um, he taught on, on countless things. I'm um, including what's called um, the theology of the body, um, which is a newer way of understanding um, Christian sexuality. If you've never had a chance to explore the th theology of the body, I highly recommend it. Um, he was also this great preacher. You know, in, in Poland, they would have um, youth days um, in the summer. Um, all the youth from Poland would travel to Czestochowa for youth days. And John Paul II took that same idea and he said, we're going to have world youth days. And so that's what he did. All over the world he would go. Um, millions and millions of youth would come to hear him um, preach and teach. And in fact, he um, spoke to m more people than anyone in world history. Millions and millions and millions of people. Um, it's also interesting, you know, um, John Paul II knew about St. Faustina because St. Faustina was also from Poland. And so when he became Pope, um, he canonized St. Faustina. And he also declared that the Sunday after Easter would be Divine Mercy Sunday. Um, this mystery of, of God's mercy and love being poured out into the world, um, the, the chaplet of Divine Mercy, um, is very com connected to Poland, to St. Faustina, but also to um, St. John Paul II. And it's interesting in his own life, you know, he, he was very strong, he was um, very athletic, but what happened was in 1981, a few years after he was Pope, um, he was shot. Um, he was shot by a young man, um, and he would never really be the same after that. Um, he would carry that wound, if you will, for the rest of his life. Um, it greatly weakened him. Um, St. John Paul II would say that one person, um, one finger um, pulled the trigger on the gun that, and, and, one, and another finger guided the bullet. And he attributed his, his kind of miraculous recovery to Our Lady of, of, of Fatima, I believe, and he took that bullet um, to her um, and, you know, acknowledged um, her intercession in his life. Um, that, that man would end up going to prison in 1984 on the cover of Time magazine was John Paul II with this man in prison, this young man. 
Um, the, the young man wore a, a black turtleneck sweater with blue jeans and white running shoes. And there was an older man um, who was dressed in a white robe and had a white skull cap on his head. And they sat fat facing each other, this up close and personal meeting. And the young man's name was Mehmet Ali Akma. And he, in fact, tried to assassinate John Paul II. Um, the intended victim was John Paul II, and he went to go visit um, Mehmet in prison. And, you know, he held the hand that held the gun whose bullet um, tore into his body. And in that cell, there was a photographer and a videographer. And John Paul II wanted that scene to be shown around the world um, because it was a scene of, of forgiveness and really an embodiment of divine mercy, if you will. Um, and, you know, that picture of him um, holding the hand of this man and forgiving him um, spoke, you know, thousands of words. And at the end of the meeting, um, John Paul II hold the, held the man's hand to his forehead um, as a sign of respect, and he shook the man's hands tenderly. And he left, and he said later, when we talked, what we talked about must remain a secret between us. I spoke to him as a brother whom I have pardoned and who has my complete trust. And so again, um, not only did he promote divine mercy, but he was an example, kind of an icon of divine mercy in his own life. Um, of course, John Paul II, at the end of his life, he had Parkinson's. Um, he was greatly diminished in his physical appearance, and he ended up dying in, in 2005. And I think there's a, a couple things to hold on to. Um, one is that St. John Paul II um, was a, a great man of hope. Um, he lived in very difficult times. He was an orphan by the time he was 23. His country was taken over by the Nazis and then the communists. And yet, um, he was an enduring sign of hope. Um, in the church and in the world, um, he often spoke of hope. He also was a man of prayer. I've, I've met people who were in his presence when he would pray in the mornings, and there was just an intensity and a sincerity, a depth um, in his prayer life um, that was very evident and very consistent. And finally, you know, he, he taught many times on the, the value and the importance of human dignity, that all human beings have dignity and value and worth. And at the end of his life, um, when he had nothing to give physically, um, he still held up that, that idea, that, that, that value, that virtue, that, that all human beings have dignity and value and worth. And to the very end, he was um, an example of that, again, in his own life. And so this afternoon, um, we give thanks for St. John Paul the Great. Um, we, we give thanks for his life. And we pray that we, too, can um, rely on God in a very deep way, um, that he might um, give us hope, give us hope during this pandemic, during these challenging times, and that we might turn to him in prayer, that we might give our lives more fully to him, in prayer, and that we too might honor um, the dignity in every human being, um, human beings in the womb, human beings who are children, human beings who are adults, human beings who are el elderly. Um, all human beings have dignity and value and worth. We pray that that value um, might take deeper root in us and in our country. We pray this in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.